Today we're gonna to be creating our loom. So we've already made this frame out of clay. We've decorated it and now we're going to take apart these pieces and set them aside for later. So I'm gonna very carefully unwind my pipe cleaner. This is gonna be my hanger for later. That'll be our last step. Then you're gonna find that two pieces of yarn have been tied to your main yarn. So you're just gonna gently pull apart this little tie just very gently. And then these two colors you're gonna save for later. So I'm gonna set them aside again. All right, now you're gonna find the end of your loom yarn and you're going to unravel it carefully. Okay, and you're gonna find that on the back there is a hole that's labeled A and B. That's gonna be for our hanger at the end. Some of you may not have made those. You might not have wanted that and that's okay. But on the other holes, you're gonna see that they're numbered one through 15. And so we're gonna be following along with these um, numbers in order. So you're gonna just follow along. What you might wanna have nearby is a pencil or something pointy to help us poke through the holes with the yarn in case um, your holes were really little or you didn't make one. This one looks like it needs poked through. A little bit of the Mod Podge that we used to seal these kind of filled up this hole. So I'm actually cleaning out my holes, making sure they're ready to go. Okay. All right, so I found the end of my piece of yarn and I have number one already weaved through there for you. So what we're gonna do is basically follow along. We're either going up or we're going down that number. So it's already going down number one and we need to find number nine and we're gonna come up. So we're gonna always be looking at these numbers the whole time. So you're gonna have this in front of you. So I'm gonna find the end of my yarn and I'm going to push it through number nine. Now, if your holes are little and you're having trouble, you can kind of use a little tool. Normally we would be using um, needles, but since some of us are gonna be at home, that's what we might have to do. So I have it coming up number nine. Do you see that? It's coming up towards me. So I'm gonna pull this until it reaches the bottom, the end. All right, I'm gonna just, um, I'm gonna pull gently on that so it's nice and tight, but not too hard, it's gonna come out. So I'm coming up through number nine, and you're just gonna follow along with me. Now we're gonna go next door, we're gonna go down number eight. I'm gonna use my little tool, these holes are a little small. So it came down number eight. The next one we're gonna come up, so we're gonna go underneath. We're coming here to number 15. If the end of your pieces get frayed, you can always kind of snip them or wait till the end because we are gonna keep pushing it through so it doesn't really matter if they get a little frayed, it's fine. Once again, pull it a little tighter so that I have that there. I'm gonna find the end again. I lost it, there it is. Okay, so I'm coming up through number 15. Now I'm gonna go next door, I'm gonna go down number 14. You can always sniff off the frayed piece and keep going. Okay, so I went down 14. Now I'm going to come over here to number seven, but I'm coming up. So we always go down, up, down, up. So now we're going, we went down, now we're going up. Up through number seven. Okay, now I'm gonna go next door to number six and I'm gonna go down. down number six and then up number 13. I 
it's easier for you to kind of turn it over for a moment to kind of shove that yarn in there, you can do that and you can pull it through. Okay, so I came up 13 and now I'm going to go down 12. down 12 and now I'm coming up number five. Find number five. Okay, up number five, which means I'm gonna go down number four. This is definitely the hardest part of this entire weaving project is just setting the loom up and getting it through the holes. But once we get past this, then it becomes a pattern and it's much, much easier. All right, so I went down number four and now I'm coming up number 11. I know there's a long piece of yarn here, so just trying to keep it nice and straight and not tangled up on each other is what we need to do. Up number 11. And then I'm going to be going down number 10. Sometimes the yarn might get kind of caught on an edge, so make sure that it's not. Just make sure it's staying nice and clean. All right, down number 10. We're almost done. Now we have two more holes. We're gonna come up number three. So close. So we're coming up number three. Oops, see right here how I accidentally caught myself? You just need to be careful that doesn't happen. Just pull it to the front. There we go, nice and clean. See, I'm getting a weave or my loom on there. And then the last one, we're going down number two and we're done with the loom. Okay, so when I turn it over, you'll notice that each little hole has a piece of yarn that's coming out and the only time that they go across the loom is on the back. So that doesn't look very nice. So we're making sure that that's on the back and that none of the holes in the front have that on there. If you do, that's okay. As long as you have, it's mostly put together, we can still use it to weave. So now your loom should look something like this. All right, so now that we're done, weaving through our warp string. I think I called this a loom earlier. The frame that we use is called a loom. The string that you use to weave through and create the weaving structure is called a warp. So this is our warp string and now we're gonna be um, weaving in around the weft string. Now at the end of your warp string, you're going to go ahead and trim off any of those pieces that are frayed so have a nice clean edge, all right? Now I wanna turn my loom so that the hole that we finished on is at the bottom for me. That's gonna help me just kind of imagine what's happening here and start in the correct pattern. So when we weave, it's a very simple pattern of under, over, under, over, under, over, and it repeats and repeats and repeats. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my string. Now, that, now this is actually gonna become my weft string. That's the strings you use to weave with. Um, since it's already attached, we're going to use it. And I'm going to start with my first string that's next to the one I ended on. I'm going to go under this warp string. I'm going to go under, then I'm going to go over. Then I'm going to go under and over. I like to weave around the outside of my weaving because I have more room. And then it's easier to see what should be next. All right, especially in the beginning before we pull this tight and make a little circle in the middle. So I left off on this string. I went under, over, under, and then I like to kind of pull the string, make sure it doesn't get caught, 
pull the string, when I get about halfway around, I like to start to pull on it. Now when that happens, it gets a little confusing sometimes because you think, oh, where did I leave off? A little trick is to pull up on your weft string that you were using and it will touch the last warp string that you went over or under. So here, I can tell that I went under this warp string here. So that means the next one's going to go over. So I went under this one, I'm gonna go over, then I'm gonna go under this one, over this string, under this one, over, under. So if I get confused, I can pull up. See, I went under, now I'm gonna go over, under, over. When I get about halfway around, since my yarn is so long, I like to pull it so it doesn't get tangled. All right, so as I'm pulling, you'll see it'll start to make a little circle in the center. Now we have some options here. You can continue weaving with this entire piece until you get to the end, or if you would like to switch out to one of your other colors I gave you, you can, you can cut this piece early and then tie on this next string, which I'm gonna show you how to do, and then you can continue with the new color. When you're done with that, you could cut it again or continue with that. It's gonna be up to you.